All right, so the part two, let's just see what the part two of this. We're going to return once again to our Rastafari Hebraic year. Now, this is what we're saying about the 22nd of um, the 22nd of November. If we go to, actually, my bad, I think I just said the 22nd of November. I should have said 22nd of December. 22nd of December, the 22nd of December. Now, if we look right here, 22nd of December, let's see if we can... Get this um, more in focus right here. 22nd of December. If you look right here, 22nd of December is the third day of Hanukkah. The third day of Hanukkah. Now, the first day, Hanukkah 1, sunset December 20th. The whole season is to sunset. Remember, it's uh, a, feast of, a festival of light originally to dedicate the, the temple, but the temple originally was the Mekdash, so the holy place. Now, remember how Christos, the Moshiach, our black Lord and Savior, showed us now that the real temple is, is, is man, is man's hypostasis or his akal, his hypostasis, his akal of Christos is the real temple. You understand? This is the last resurrection, which the scripture points to, which is the resurrection of the body. So that means the first part of us working out our salvation is in spirit and in truth. That is concerning our, our spiritual aspect, our God relation, our relationship with source, our psychological aspect, our feeling, thought, emotions, our relationship with one another and ourselves, and then our physical aspect, our relationship with the earth, with the earth around us, or with, or with the, the, um, the natural, you understand, the natural aspect. So that is the true temple. The true temple, in other words, is the temple of, of the body, you understand, but not the body, just the flesh body. The flesh part of the body is what we can call the third part of the real body of the real hypostasis. Now, those who know the Hebrew and have studied even the Ethiopic will know that there are at least two or three words that can constitute body. Namely, there's the akal, when it speaks about the, the hypostatical body or the mystical body of the church or of Christ. Then there's the siga or the shiga, which is the physical flesh body, like usually we'll say, yeah, Christos Akala, Akala Christos, the body of Christ, falsely in the Latin to say Corpus Christi, but Corpus is a dead body because they, they don't have in the Latin that hypostatical word, Akal, as it is in the Hebrew and even in the Greek because of the ancient Egyptian coming out of Ethiopia through Egypt to the north to the Greeks. Now, when we're speaking about this this particular alignment that is to occur, there's an alignment. Now we're gonna bring in this bring in this drive right here. Bring in this drive right here and we want you to see something right here. Now this particular article this particular article um is concerning um Thursday, December twenty second. Thursday, December 22nd. Now, this is from December 2011, Sky, Sky Watching Events, a total lunar eclipse from December 10th. And we touched on that, where they said the sun and the moon, an impossible sight with the sun and the moon. We haven't seen any so-called pictures on it yet. No one has really shared any particular pictures on this particular event as of yet. But they said it was not to be seen in the northern hemisphere, but more as you go out to the west of the country. Now, right here, it says, um, this is from this space.com. It says, uh, December 22nd, uh, 1230 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, a solstice. It will be winter solstice in the northern hemisphere and summer solstice in the southern hemisphere. On this day, the sun is at its farthest southern uh, um, declin uh, declination, declination and is 6.5 degrees away from the center of the Milky Way. 
This is exactly, now here's what's so interesting about this. This is from the picture that we had actually showed elsewhere. Now, this drive right here is a little bit, is a little bit slow. Let's see if we can uh, move this up so you can see the picture. This is the same picture we showed you in the previous portion of this lecture um, concerning what's going to happen December 22nd of this year, 2011. Now here they're saying that this is the same alignment as will occur December 21st, 2012. They said this, the alignment that's happening this year, the scientists, and this is verifiable, provable information, they have put it forward that it's the same alignment that will occur the next year, one day earlier on December 21st, 2012. 12. Yet no catastrophes have been predicted for this year, just as none will occur next year. Well, this is what they're saying, and let's put a question mark there, but as they say, simplify. Who lay to mind? We say, Bamarinya, always prepared. In other words, be always, always faithful. In other words, to say, always prepared, all the same. But what is significant here is that they say this is the same alignment that will occur December 21st. Let's go over this one more time. It will be winter solstice in the northern hemisphere. Where are we? In the country of the north. If you look in the prophetic books concerning the Beta Israel in the last days, and there, and there being gathered out of every place that Yahweh says he has scattered them, it says from the northern, the northern country, the northern country, and this is where this is where we are at. This is where we've been scattered in, in North America and the so-called Caribbean, but it's all part of this northern hemisphere and summer solstice in the southern hemisphere. On this day, the sun is at its farthest southern uh, declination and is 6.5 degrees away from the center of the Milky Way. This is exactly the same alignment as will occur on December 21st, 2012. Now, when they say there will be no catastrophes, you see, when they say there will be no catastrophes for that time, I, I would say, well, you know, still be prepared. You know, don't read that and say, oh, I don't have to be prepared because they're telling me. No, they're giving you certain facts, and they can't figure out how there will be any catastrophes. They they don't understand that aspect, but a lot of it has to do with human consciousness as well, how the human consciousness does have an effect. Let's move this out the way for a moment because this computer is um is is acting up right there, and we'll come back to it hopefully if we have time. Now we have the same image, the same image. Let's let's go back to this image, the same image of that particular alignment. And this is the particular alignment right here that we showed you earlier with Ankwahid Bure in a very similar position to, and we can go back to even ancient Egypt. We have here in ancient Egypt, we have this in ancient Egypt, which is a, a, um, a relief from the Temple of Amun at, at Hibis in the Harga Oasis, According to the text, it's the falcon god attacking the snake is Seth, is Seth, and this is from something called Seth, the god of confusion. Now, even Seth is a very interesting um, subject matter that we're not at liberty in this particular lecture to go into uh, much detail of other than to uh, remind one that in the Bible and in the scripture in the ancient time, many people had similar or same names. Let's just say that. So it's possible, and it's it's quite likely that many have confused the two Seths, even the name Seth, Sate, in Bamarinya, it means female or feminine. And Seth, they say, was worshipped or regard it highly, on it highly in in the lower, in in the in the upper country. Speaking of the south, like in Ethiopia and Nubia, but in Egypt, Seth was considered to be a bad, a, a bad guy. 
you know what I'm saying, the Seth in Egypt is to be a bad guy. But then there's also the Ethiopic books, which speak about the children of Seth. But then later on, we have the children of Sheth, the children of Sheth in the vision with uh, Jacob, where it says that a star will rise out of Jacob, which was Balaam's prophecy, and it will destroy all the children of Sheth. So we have Sheth, which is also a type of Seth, later on in the scripture. So we need to understand that as well. Just like we have the angels, the sons of God, then we have fallen angels. You, you, you understand? So we have good angels, true angels, then angels that have, have, have fallen from grace. It's like the whole thing with Satan and Lucifer. Lucifer, you no know, light bearer, was when that being was still obedient and in grace. But when that being fell, no longer a light bearer or an illuminated one, but became a one who was darkened, you understand, not racially, but consciousnessly speaking, and in ignorance, no longer with a light bearer. This is why when the Bible speaks about spiritual wickedness in high places. But let's get to this image right here and try to explain what we want to explain about this um, coming this coming uh, menorah, this coming uh, menorah time that's coming up. Um, let's go back to our calendar, and this is going to be online at www.lojsociety.org, the Rastafari, the, the Hebraic and the Judaic year, which gives us for this particular cycle the um, corresponding um, Western lunar reckonings of our holy days and our holy time. Now, this is not one of the high holy days, but we do have it observed even in the gospel in the New Testament by our black Lord and Savior, Yeshua HaMoshiach. So it's December 22nd, which will be the third day of Hanukkah, the third day of Hanukkah. Now, as we go further in this, in this particular article, it says that the solstice will occur Thursday, December 22nd, 2011, which is now the third day of Hanukkah, the Festival of Lights, where this particular um, type of a menorah is utilized that has nine particular, nine particular days. Remember, there's no uh, higher single digit number than nine. And when you come to ten, you come back around to recycle or to one. In other words, so this is for this menorah, this menorah time or time of illumination. And spiritually, metaphysically, this needs to be understood. Now, on this day, the sun is at its farthest southern declination and is 6.5 degrees away from the center of, of the Milky Way. Now, they said during this particular time, December the 22nd, Thursday, and Friday, December 23rd, at dawn, there will be a close encounter between Mercury and the moon. The moon will be just to the right of Mercury on December 22nd. And let's see if we can show this right here, show this particular picture um, right here, if this machine won't, won't uh, stall out on us. Okay, here we go. Here, here we go. Let's... Let's see if you can see this right here. Okay, this is this is what is this is what it's talking about right here. There's the moon, and there's a star right here. This little star right here, Mercury. Mercury. Oh, maybe over here, saying Mercury, right? All right. Um, let's see if we can go. So now Jupiter, Jupiter, um, or Jupiter which is Dia or Zeus, Zeus, if you look in the Bible where they thought, I think Paul, they said either he was Jupiter or was that Barnabas, that he was Jupiter, Jupiter, Jah is the father, Jove by Jove, Jave, Yave. Tuesday, December 27th, now this is all during the Hanukkah, this coming Hanukkah feast or festival of light season at 10.52 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, Jupiter has a satellite show. Jupiter has a satellite show. Three of Jupiter's moons 
will put on a fine show tonight. Castillo or Callisto will be in an unusual position due south of the planet because of the extreme tilt of the plane of Jupiter's moon this year. Now Europa, what's known as Europa, this is Europa. Now when we get back to the so-called mythology, the Greek mythology is interesting, the whole story of Europa. Um, I think she was a product of a, of a rape, and there's a whole deeper interpretation of that. But Europa will be moving off from in front of Jupiter on one limb while its shadow begins a transit on the opposite limb. Again, Ganymede, well off to the right, this is Ganymede, let's bring this up right here, will be... Um, will still be casting its shadow just below Europa. Finally, the great red spot will be perfectly placed right in the middle, right in the middle of all of this. So we have Callisto, Europa, and, and we have Gan Ganymede. And if you draw a line here, you can see that, that particular recurring type of a, a triangular shape between the position of those particular moons. So those are three of Jupiter's moons that will be visible on Tuesday, December 27th. Now they give some additional information, but what we find to be very interesting is that this goes straight through the Hanukkah, the Hanukkah time, a festival of lights. So we will also have a festival of um, heavenly lights the Mercury, it's telling us Mercury, Venus, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, visible, Uranus is well placed in the early evening and Pisces all month, Neptune well placed in Aquarius all month as well. And this is from this particular site here that we just wanted to reference this. So if anybody else wants to follow up on this particular site, um, uh, here we go right here. Machine is uh, a little bit slow. So the long winter winter nights allow observation of stars from all seasons except summer, including two unusual morning stars. The morning stars. Two unusual morning stars in this particular season. And these two unusual morning stars are Mars, are Mars and Saturn. Mars and Saturn. So this is this particular site here. Amazing views of November 2011 solar, the solar eclipse. There was a solar eclipse for those who've been asking about that. Um, amateur telescopes, more night sky features from the Starry Night Education, the December 2011 sky watching events. And this was an interesting article, especially for the fact that the particular alignment that is said to occur on the 22nd of December 2011 actually is the same sort of alignment that will occur next year or is expected next year from the orderly rotations of the heavens, you know, given there's no dramatic changes um, for December 21st, 2012, a total lunar eclipse a close encounter between Mercury and the moon, and a planetary tour de force are just some of the amazing sights sky watchers can see this month. Here are the most exciting sky watching targets for for August, I mean for, for December. For December, let's see if we can bounce so you can see some of those stars right there. Um, all right. So we're going to get back into some more of this, um, the full moon of December is usually called the oak moon. The oak moon, interesting, the word oak, oak moon. Um, like I said, there's some more information here, but uh, we're, we're, we're limited on time in this, so we'll just take you through a couple of more shots of this right here. You know, a lot of us in the cities you know, really are being robbed of this vision of the fullness of the world around us, the world that the true creator created, the creator of heaven, earth, and the sea, and all that is therein. They keep us in the artificial 
in the artificial time zone so we can see and be prepared for the greater significances so just like this image that we just like this image that we showed um from the beginning let's go back to this again just like the image that we showed from the beginning um right here see if we can bring this up where Apophis Apophis is seeking to control in other words to down press the spiritual energy that's present in the spiritual subtle channels of the back seeking to uh, suppress and keep people's um, consciousness and spiritual awakening because of the fear because the fear and the chaos factor so these alignments are significant if we spiritually prepare ourselves these alignments are very very significant but unfortunately they tend to keep the people in the mass distraction just like this year most people be celebrating Christ mass you understand Christ mass instead of the feast or the festival of light but my brothers and sisters be in the light and remain in the light and this is where we wanted to uh, connect this in the last part I think we only got a couple of minutes maybe a minute or so left is Psalm 119 Psalm 119 is a key meditation 119 105 and it reads this is from noon noon Thy word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Meditate upon this, my brothers and sisters, the word of John, the word of Yah, the word of the God and Father, our black Lord and Savior, Jesus Christos, Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMoshiach, is a lamp to I and I feet, to our feet, to our walk, to our progress. And it's a light, it's an illumination to I and I path in the way, the truth, and the life. So my brothers and sisters, be prepared. Hule Taman, Shalom Rastafari. This is your brother, Wendem Yadon. And to the others, Rasyadinos Tefari.